Actually, the other person doing Elixir has a Twitch chat bot with the same socket lib you got. Yeah, it's, it seems like it's a popular one. Yeah, let's switch over. Here we go. All right. Um, so this is not secret. So that's why <laughs> it's visible on the stream. Um, but I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna try some stuff here. I have been trying actually. Um, I think my mistake has been um, so I did try this gun. I think, yeah, at the end of the last stream, I was like, oh, there's some stuff out there, and I can use that. Uh, it seems like the way, yeah, the way to make a Twitch bot now is over WebSocket. And there, there's going to be some other steps that we're going to need to do that I kind of uh, skipped. <laughs> uh, I did some investigation uh, over the, the intervening week. Owner, over intervening yeah that's a word uh to figure out exactly how this is supposed to work and um i actually made a little bot in um typescript on node just to uh make sure i knew what i was doing <laughs> and uh so there there is some stuff that we'll need to do like you can't get just a um, like it's a multi-step process to authenticate to be able to like have the bot be able to talk to Twitch. Uh, so some of that happens before like the WebSocket stuff happens. And we are going to need to implement that some way somehow. But first I would just like to make sure that this part works. Like it seems uh, ignore all the errors. It seems that I can I can use this module. I can call start link on this, and I can get a process ID, and then I should be able to do some stuff, interacting, and then we should be able to handle messages coming back. Um. I think this is, I'm not sure what this is supposed to be doing. So we're gonna go look at the docs because not only am I new to Elixir, I have not successfully gotten this to, to all work, uh, this WebSocket library, but it seems more documented. And I, I've actually I've seen a bunch of like, uh, like just Googling this, looking at YouTube for stuff about this, this kind of use case making a Twitch bot or using WebSockets, this um, package module library uh, comes up. And so you can see, other than me adding some additional stuff to start link, um, this part is just copy and pasted from the documentation. Um, I did, I had some other attempts pushed to GitHub in that pull request over over here uh, and yeah doing other things so this is all in uh, this pull request to make a simple twitch chatbot but it was not simple enough so this is just me trying various things and trying to make it so that I could just run the application and have this just work and I was not having a lot of luck at going down that path so I'm trying to, I want to take a step back and let's see if we go back to here, we go look at examples. So here's like an echo client example from uh, their GitHub repo. Um, okay. So I think the idea here is that this is um, I don't I don't know all the uh, the Elixir terminology, but I'll I'll, I'll call this a method <laughs> um, that a user of Echo Client would use, right? And you have a client which is 
So client would be the PID, going, going back to what I'm doing here in the terminal. This PID would be the client that you would be passing. Here, maybe we can do this side by side. So I don't have to keep switching back and forth. There we go. Uh, that's interesting. Okay. And that, that is something that I have been seeing, um, I think. So this, this pattern though, of you see the same thing in the examples I've seen of like a, a gen server more generally, where you could find a module that uh, what uses JIT server, and you need to find a start link uh, to be able to like uh, start this in the context of a supervisor, and then you'll define methods. Um, you define methods that are used. Yeah, the connection closed. There we go. To find methods to use to interact with that, and those things then. Um, like send to the gen server rather than you defining a server and then externally sending directly to the process, you provide a wrapper. So in some ways this feels to me um, when you define one of these modules that it's both a client and a server rolled into one. Uh, and in this case, this, the server quote unquote is just a client of, you know, the in a, in a networking sense of the WebSocket. Okay. So um, what do we actually need to do here? I don't know that I need, I don't know what this actually does. Like this to me feels like this. Handle cast send, type message frame state, reply frame state. What does this do? Is this in their echo example? Do they handle cast? They don't handle cast. So I'm gonna say that I don't need that right now. Now handle frame, um, I was actually digging in the uh, this library source code and it seems like under the hood, this then consumes another library that does like TCP, HTTP, you know, whatever. And it seems like this is kind of a common pattern you have this handle frame that is called to handle a message payload at some level of abstraction. In this case, we're looking at text messages and we're currently using IO puts, although we require loggers, so we could really just like handle cast as a gen server specific function. Okay. Um, well, I don't, it was in one of their examples. I copied it. Here we go. We'll just use logger here. But handle frame looks like the thing we want to do. This will log out whatever message we get back from Twitch. And then maybe I'll just copy paste there, handle this connect stuff. Uh, if I remember which key control is, there we go. Okay. So what does this do? This says handle disconnect reason local. Local close with reason, okay. And then handle disconnect, disconnect map state. I don't understand what this does. Handle disconnect, connection st status map state. state, reconnect new state, reconnect new con, new state. So let's, this lets us tell it to try to reconnect. We may want to change this behavior at some point because what I imagine is, is this, this is gonna run inside of, a, this, this is making a process, right? And we probably just want that process to try to reconnect forever, maybe? Or alternatively, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure out kind of overall behavior of, uh, let's take a step back uh, soon. Maybe now? 
let me let me let me keep you know, let me continue copy pasting stuff from their example. Let's get these things here. We can get some logging about what's going on. Okay. I don't want to actually implement an echo client. I don't want to echo back anything we're getting from Switch. I just want to be able to send messages to uh, to the to the WebSocket and see what happens. Essentially, okay. So. I don't think we need that. Um, okay, so let's do a def send message. Client. Okay, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, if I rename one, I have to rename both, yeah? Text message. Uh, we can include the logging too. Right, so this should result in us, like if, if I call this from the, the terminal uh, with the PID and a message, that should get sent to Twitch. We should see uh, logging line here. And then, um, the other thing I should probably pull up is the docs on the Twitch WebSocket interface. Typo 29. Yes. You know, I think I don't need to save letters. I mean, honestly, Copilot's doing a lot of the writing anyway. So this the spec thing, this is defining a specification of what this method uh, does, right? So why why are there parents here <laughs> uh, and not here does that matter question mark presumably send frame returns an okay yeah it does i prefer with the uh with parents sure Okay, it doesn't hate it. Most libraries do it like that. That's probably why Copilot <laughs> did it like that then. Okay, so this should let me send a message, right? So if I if I start up a new process, I do twitchbot dot websocket dot send message. Send message. The question is, can I? Can I do this? Marriage? <laughs> uh, before the connection time's out. But if not, well, I'll have them, the uh, the message. So this switch isn't gonna like this probably. Oh, connection gone. Uh, function switchbot.websocket.send message to is undefined or private. Interesting. Oh, right. Uh, I, I know what I did wrong. Recompile. I would have no idea what, I, uh, what I'm doing here if it wasn't for a couple of videos I watched <laughs> uh, recently. I have, I have been doing... Oh, connected. Interesting. Uh, and then send a message. All right, we got a message back. This is the most success I've had. <laughs> Receive message tmi.twitch.tv 421 u hello unknown command. And we're connected. Yes. Okay. So that's that's real good. That's really good. Um and we're disconnected. Good. What I really wanted to do and the thing I probably just was trying to do too much <laughs> too soon was re really what I wanted to do is I wanted this once it was connected to automatically do the handshake um, that needs to happen for it to authenticate and I think what was happening is um, because the the observed behavior 
was that it would, like I would just run mix from the command line, the application would start up, you would see, oh, it's connecting, oh, messages are being sent. Are they really? Don't know. Uh, and then uh, it would just end. Uh, and I think, I don't really know. Like, like what's going on here? We're, we're connected. <laughs> so we're, we're handle connect is getting called multiple times. Um, handle disconnect. Oh, I see. Okay. So presumably super here is doing something invo invoking something that's returning uh, reconnect. So if it's not a local reason that we've disconnected, we attempt to reconnect. As I guess I'm, I'm guessing what's going on here. Now, does that mean my process ID is still valid? No. Huh. Exit from PID. Okay, shell process exited with reason. Remote closed. Hmm, interesting. I'm, I think there's some, like, if we have, so let, let's, let's, uh, do that step back that I was talking about a second ago. It was saying the PID was undefined. Yes, exactly. But it was defined, like back up here. Right, I said, uh, okay, PID equals start link. So presumably we lose it. Here. Uh, anyway, taking a step back. So there is an application file here and that the, how I was, how I was imagining. Yeah, there's no need to believe the language. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, maybe it's something to do with uh, the interactive Elixir session that's doing something, I don't know. Um, so again, I'm, I'm new to Elixir, so I don't know this may be not the way to do this, but what I was imagining how this bot would work would essentially be there would be two processes, two like things. One would be the WebSocket uh, and then one would be the bot. Now, honestly, I think it it's feeling more like maybe we don't need that. Like right now, like maybe this is just like a naive viewpoint, right? But how we're interacting with this WebSocket module, like you could you could imagine, okay, we could we could send messages, we could um, make something higher level than this, where it's like, okay, now authenticate, now do this, um, and then you have another process that. Uh, is interacting with with this process to tell it what to do and to get messages back. Although I don't know exactly how we would get like, right, so let's take a step back. So the objective here ultimately is to have a Twitch bot so it can sit in the channel, in the chat. It can respond potentially to some, some commands it can see messages in general, which it needs to do to be able to, to respond to commands. We might have it archiving some information temporarily to Redis. We um, will probably have it respond to some commands and send, th send things to the chat. So it can read from chat, it can write from chat. Now, we should be able to do that over the WebSocket by sending the right messages. And I imagine we might like, I guess this is sufficient. Okay, we can send a message. I guess the question is, if something is interacting with this, how does it get the message back? Like, how is the WebSocket connected to the thing that's receiving messages? Maybe the easiest way to solve that is to not. 
and to actually have all the logic live inside of this module, right? So we could we could do everything in here, right? We could have this, um, there's some authentication stuff we have to do before we can actually talk over the WebSocket. Um, and maybe we could, that could be here, but let's just assume uh, that we have the things we need to be able to do the handshake that Twitch is waiting for. Um, do I have a tab that has the Twitch API? No, I don't think so. One sec. Twitch chat WebSocket API. It's in my history. Okay, but not event sub. Here, let's bring this over here. There we go. So if you Google this, and I've done this several times, you'll get you'll end up in this event subsection, and this is not what we're looking for. Uh, I'm pretty sure. So this lets you get like information about channel follows and uh, what else? Overview. Broadcaster goes online. You know these these sorts of bits of information. And we might want this at some point, like that's the thing you could do, but that's not what I'm trying to do. We wanna look at uh, chat and chatbots. And then uh, we could look at getting started here. And this gives a example of using tmi.js on node. Um, but if we look at, Let's see, is it authenticating with the server? Uh, this notice at the top, this is about uh, being a verified uh, chatbot. That's not the same thing as just having access. Um, yeah. I was able to set up a credential the other day and not using tmi.js, but using some other uh, JavaScript library was able to uh, get a bot going and, uh, and and whatnot. But it says here to authenticate with server, it bot sends pass and nick messages. The order you send the messages matters. You must send pass before sending nick. Otherwise, the server replies with this. Yeah, so you need to register. Um, you just follow that link. You need to be logged in. It will. Um, ask you to provide a redirect URI, you know, it's just kind of the standard OAuth setup. Um, I just put in like localhost because I'm not gonna have like a web UI for this. Uh, and then you get a client ID and then you use that client ID to um, generate a URL that someone, <laughs> someone needs to open like in a web browser to be able to authenticate. And then you get back a URL, or it redirects you, right? Uh, and that includes an access token. And then you use that access token uh, to send in the pass and Nick messages. Oh, it's OAuth colon token. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So here's an example where we're sending cap request, membership tags, commands. This this part is required. It, it talks about this somewhere, but to be able to see certain things, BRB, all right. Uh, and then you send a pass and you send a nick. Who are you? Uh, the nickname should be the lowercase login name of the Twitch account you used to get your access token. So you can't pretend to be someone else. All right, and then we, we see a bunch of things. So, how am I gonna do this on stream? <laughs> because I don't wanna, um, like we're gonna have to generate this token and uh, I don't wanna show it. Um, okay, let's think about that a little bit. I did, I was thinking of that in advance. And um, so you can see here, I, I figured out <laughs> how to get uh, environment variables. 
So, but I'm, I'm just using the, um, I don't want to bother necessarily setting up environment variables for these things. So what I'm doing is I'm just having defaults temporarily. Um, I'll take these out at some point when we get this into a state where, you know, we can reliably just run it like inside of a container, deploy it, those, those sorts of things. So, um, there'll be a file. This might actually even be the right path, TBD on that. But we need to read uh, client secret file name. And it's, that's gonna contain, it says switch key, but it's our, our uh, client secret. Hey, death row. Good morning. How's it going? Yeah, I got you looking into Elixir the other day. Well, now it's here. <laughs> he brought it up the other uh, a couple weeks ago, I think, actually. I was like, well, I could write something in Elixir. I don't actually know that I need this client secret in, in this flow. Right, because we have the client ID and the URI. And then we get an access token. I don't need the secret. You watch one of those, oh yeah, like one of the Fireship videos. I don't think I actually need the secret for this uh, authentication flow, actually. So I'm gonna get rid of this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I watched that and I watched a bunch of other videos too, just because they're, um, and I think, well, I have two thoughts on the matter. One, one thought is that there's a lot of introductory, oh, make a module. <laughs> Uh, you start link or start or use an agent or that, you know, like very isolated. Here's how you do a thing. And then how do you then turn that into an application where you have multiple things and they need to interact? Uh, it feels like there's just a cliff there. <laughs> and the only answers I see are use a framework. And I'm, I'm not making a web app. <laughs> Maybe there's a framework, but I don't want to use a framework. I want to learn how to use the language and like, like actually learn. Um, and yeah, so that, that kind of was rubbing me uh, the wrong way the other day, but I got over it. Uh, but I think in this particular circumstance, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this quote unquote WebSocket module. I'm probably gonna rename this actually. Welcome back, Brainless. Um, probably just gonna rename this. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Let's just go forward. So what's interesting here, how's this going to work? How is this going to work? Hmm. So the issue we have here is that we need to do some stuff really, but we may want to do something before we actually initiate. Oh, you know, I could just before we call start link on WebSock X, I could just do some stuff here. Couldn't I? Let's, let's pursue this thought. So the, the first thing I'm observing here is that we, hmm. Let's do this. Let's pull this out of here. We're not gonna actually do the client ID. Um, yeah, to do room hard coding. Yes, yes indeed. Oops, okay, so just do client if I could only type <laughs> there we go uh, the only code I've written for twitch is a Taylor Swift bot for uh, message to the lamp 
Mrs. Dejected Lamp. Uh, what uh, what language do you do that bot in, Death Row? Okay, so we're gonna construct a URL. Did it in JavaScript? <laughs> How is it to a Taylor Swift bot? Uh, what is? Yes. Yeah, does it just give lines from a song or? Does it have certain commands? I I know very little about this person. Uh, it's just hooked up to an API that gets all lyrics. I see, I see. <laughs> I should have written it with Swift. Nice. Uh, okay, so what we need to do here is something I don't know that we're gonna be able to do, actually. Let's think about this. Okay, so um, auth URL. Hey, it knows it. Yeah, we're not doing that. Okay, I think that's right. Is that right? ID that switch that TV auth to authorize token. Nope. All wrong. All wrong. Let's see, pounds. Is it curly brace? I think it is. I have the code on uh, Replit. I pay for the subscription that lets me have co my code always. Oh, interesting. It just runs there. I guess that's uh, convenient. Nothing complicated. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> now, so this this feels very weird. But what I want to do for right now, and we'll have to think of like a better solution at some point. Is I want to can I, in this process, read something from. Um, Hmm. How is this going to work as a server? Right, if we're going to... Because eventually the token will expire and we'll need a new one. IO.gets apparently. Um, I mean, I guess IRL. <laughs> so in practice, in other words, um, what we would get, what we, what we are going to get as part of this auth workflow is a refresh token. And we should be able to use that to refresh our auth token as long as we do it in a timely manner. I wonder like, how that is supposed to actually work where we have, let's say, let's say the application just has, in fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the other thing. Let's say we just have this WebSocket thing. Well, I should just call it SwitchBot, whatever, it doesn't matter. This thing, this module, right? Um, and we have some state, which is our, our current uh, auth token and refresh token. And at some point we have to say, oh, we need to refresh that. We use the refresh token to get a, a new token to kind of renew our session essentially. 
Hmm. I don't know. Don't know. Uh, okay, so let's let's go back to the docks here. So, yeah. So basically, what, what I'm expecting to have to do is we'll get redirected. Like this this will run. We'll log an off URL. So I'll click that. I'll click follow that link, and that will give me that'll take me to this URL after I authenticate, and I'll grab the access token. Um, I'll be doing that not. I'll be doing that in a, in a uh, on a screen that's not being streamed. I'll grab that. Uh, I guess I'll, yeah. This, this will be fun. Uh, grab that, paste that into here, uh, and then that token is what we send with pass. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that. So wait a second, do I not get token type bearer? Yeah, yeah, scope, access token. Is there not a refresh token? Hold on. Maybe I should read more docs. What do we have going on here? Get the user to authorize your app. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Client ID, scope, state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that is that what we're doing right now? Authorize. Yes. Code state. Uh, last I remember, the authorization was only done once, but memory is failing. Yeah, I mean the token. Sure, like this code can't be valid forever, right? Use the authorization code to get an access token and refresh token. Oops, misclick. An access token. That's that. Response type token. Response type code. Okay, so that's the difference. So right now what we're doing is we're doing a shorter flow where we're, where we are directly asking for the token, but that means we don't have, um, wait. Now that I've response type token, yeah, that gets us the access token. If we get a code, we get a code back, and then we can use that authorization code to get a token through OAuth two token, and that would allow us, if we send the client secret, to get a refresh token and an expiration. The implicit grant flow. Yeah, and then you say must be set to token. So right now we're doing an implicit grant flow. So this is more. This this is not what we want to do, but this is definitely going to be easier to get us working. So let's say to do. Use um, authorization authorization code grant flow. So there, the response type is code. Then um, use the refresh token when it expires. Oh, there we go. 
Okay. So we are, we'll need to eventually do that because otherwise uh, we could start the, our chatbot. <laughs> and then at some point it'll just like, uh, if it gets disconnected, it reconnects, whatever, it won't have a valid um, a valid token and or uh, you'd have to, you know, do these steps again, someone would have to manually intervene. Whereas I think if we do the full authorization code grant flow, we should make it so that unless like the server crashes and fully restarts, uh, as long as the process keeps going, it can keep a fresh token that it can use to, uh, to um, authorize itself. So I don't know if th this all will work, but um, maybe. Now, can we? So in our in our previous test, like we got connected. Uh, oh 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 oh! Something else I wanted to try to do. Um, to make this easier, I mean, obviously this thing is still running, but I don't have the pet anymore. And I would like to be able to um, talk to it, maybe. There's a thing where you can like name processes and we could do that, but I may just like exit the, the terminal and, and restart and do it that way, just to keep things a little simpler. Like there, you can pass in um, an ops uh, name parameter and it should name the process. There's other ways of doing that, I guess. I don't know. Again, I'm very, very new to all of this. Um, okay, so that gets us a token. And... One concern I have... So when we sent a message before, give myself a little bit more room. Uh, at some point we did successfully send a message, right? And there we go. Send PID, text hi. Uh, no, that was from before. Uh, send message, recompile, start link, send message hello, sending message hello. So whatever we're doing here in terms of sending a message, we're currently going to echo back out. Uh, and that could be a problem. So I think what I wanna do uh, why is that a problem? That's a problem because I'm I'm I don't want to even though it's it's not it's not like a secret uh, it's not a um, a permanent secret it's going to expire I still don't want to leak that on stream but I want to actually show this on stream so uh, how do I do that? Um, let's see so the the logging where that's happening. I'm just gonna remove that logging. There we go. Or, 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 um, there we go. Yeah, Invar, hey, iGamer. Um, well, it's not about that. It's about, I, I want to have logging to know the thing happened. I just didn't wanna log the message. Um, we are, Theoretically, getting in, uh, in uh, environment variables in various places. Uh, although none of these things are actually secrets. The secret is, yeah, you could just replace it. I could do that. I could do that. Uh, but I don't. I don't think. At least right now, I don't need to see the message. Now, when we the, an issue. Let's let's try this. So in the um, in the docs back here. 
it says what we need to do is we need to send pass and Nick messages. Send pass before sending Nick. So let's imagine we do that. We're gonna, we're just gonna construct something and we'll have fake, <laughs> we'll have a fake token just to see what the server response is. So I know whether it's gonna be safe to console, like to, to log that. Um, how do I exit out of this terminal? Control D. No. I mean, Control C, but it just does that. Um. <laughs> control C, Control C. Okay. Feels very harsh. All right. So this seems to work. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'll open that. And you're about to leave Twitch. Continue. Redirect mismatch. Uh, I did something wrong in the, the redirect URI for my client ID is wrong. Uh, maybe it's just that. Let me see. Um, boop, 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 boop. Registering an app. Oops. Back one. Developer console. Can I show this on stream? Manage application. Um. Yeah, this is safe to show. Yeah. So this is what it looks like in the Twitch developer console. Like if you follow the link from the docs, where it says registering an app, it takes you to this page. And then you follow the link to de the developer console and then you can create an app. And then once you create an app, you just give it a name and an OAuth redirect URL. And I just didn't have a port number there. So that's, uh, that's what's going on there. So uh, let's try this again. It's promising that this, uh, Okay. Let's take this away for a minute. <sighs> okay. Okay, so we're going to have to do this a different way. Because the problem is that like echoes in the terminal and etc. Just give me a minute and uh, I'll figure out something here. Dashboards. View all. Ah, you have to go to view all first, then you can delete. All right. Register your application. Save and bot too. <laughs> and why am I doing this? Well, I just, I did show the, the token on the stream. Oh, so briefly. And you just can't be too careful. Uh, all right, chatbot. I am not a robot. All right, client ID. Okay. So. Uh, I'm gonna do exactly what iGamer suggested, even though it's 
I mean, it's not just chat. I mean, I do have VODs turned on, although I think I have it set right now, so you have to be a sub. Yeah, I know. Um, I think I'm, yeah, I mean, this is hacky too, right? I don't like this either. The thing is, is that at least this way, it's like, yeah, no, it's fine. I, I just deleted the app, so the token shouldn't be valid anymore. Um, here's hoping, but it's fine either. Um, the scope is just interacting with chat, so it's pretty limited in what it could do. Um, and I deleted the app and made a new one. So, uh, what I'm going to do is we are going to, I don't, in, in, in this case, I don't even need the, um, I don't need any of this anymore. If I'm going to do it this way, what we're going to do is we're just going to read from the environment. the token like so um, and what I'll just have to do kind of outside of the scope of the application is do these set these steps to get that token so now this code is not going to get it's not going to do the auth flow I'm just going to do it manually um, and then put it in the environment And let me think about how that's going to work. Oh, right, right, right. So what we're going to do first is we're going to figure out, um, okay, I got, I got a little sidetracked there, but what, what I want to do first is I want to actually, um, let's see, CD Twitch bot. We're going to go here and we're going to, I don't suppose this, this doesn't retain history across sessions. So we're going to, we're going to call start link and then we're going to construct a send message to send the messages that Twitch needs, the uh, the pass and nick messages. Um, yes, okay, so we're gonna do something like, uh, let's see, we need a pattern match, okay, and then PID, and why is it connected? <laughs> All right, it does auto start, it does auto start. Right, because the, the the application, this file says to start it. That's what's going on. And that's why it pops up every once in a while, but that's why our process went away. This These connected messages aren't from me starting the WebSocket. It's from it exiting, because it, it, it's not reconnecting, it's exiting. And then the supervisor is restarting it. That's what's going on. Um, so does that mean, can we just do name, uh, no, is that, that's not the right syntax. Is that the right syntax? Is this the right syntax? And then, and then I should be able to like, get the process ID somehow from the name. that where it is apparently perfect Let's see if that's actually true <laughs> okay so if I type process where is uh, switch bot dot web socket oh, I thought that was gonna work I think it's processed at something. Maybe this is not the right. Um, let's see. 
list. Yeah, there's lots of processes. Can I just do info? Not a pig. Okay. Well, that doesn't really help me then. And I'm going to bother with this. Okay. So, aside from the thing that I'm, I'm going to be doing here, in the background there's also a process that's trying to, uh, that is actually su successfully connecting to, um, to the WebSocket endpoint that Twitch provides. So, there we go. Uh, start link. There we go. And we have a PID for as long as it, that lasts. Uh, so we could, sh should be able to like send a message. There we go. Uh, PID. And then what we want to do is we want to send pass. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna take their example uh, text here. And I'm just gonna send that. So what we should see, sending message, okay. And uh, then the connection disconnected, okay. Um, so what I wanna do though, is I wanna actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write the other line, that way I can just like up arrow back to the other message. Uh, so this is not gonna work, right? Because this is not a valid token. This is just from the docs, but the point is not for this to work right now. The point, what I want to make sure right now is that when all of this happens, that, um, that the response coming back from Twitch won't echo the token, which you would think it shouldn't. And so anyway, this, this is not going to work, right? Because the process is gone. Pass, Nick. Okay, there we go. So we get, you know, notification that we sent the message and then we get a response back. Oh, and it's ad time. <laughs> well, this is a good time for me to go get some water and I'll be back in just a few minutes.